Well, hi, thanks for joining us. I'm Chris, I'm a product manager for eFileMyForms.com and today I'm gonna to walk you through the process of filing some forms on eFileMyForms.com so you can see what the process looks like start to finish. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is visit eFileMyForms.com. So if you already have an account, this is where you would go to log in. But of course, if you're new to eFileMyForms, this is where you would go to get it set up with a new account. Uh, from the homepage here, you can get a, a sense for all the different types of forms that we support. You can get a sense of our pricing um, and even look at uh, options for getting some support through season if you need to contact us or reach out for help. So we, we try and give you as much support as possible through tax season and filing season. I know it's a stressful time for many small businesses out there, but we have a team of folks behind the scenes who are uh, here for you through this process. So I'm going to go ahead and click get started for free. And what you'll see immediately is that there is no credit card re required to get started. So basically you can sign up with some basic information and you can create an account and get going with eFile My Forms without having to enter credit card information. Of course, we do need that at the end when you're ready to check out, but we let you explore first so you can get a sense for how this works. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to an account that I've created already, and we're just going to log in from here. So you might notice that there are filers and recipients as uh, some of the first options in the navigation here. Filers are essentially you, the person creating or the company creating uh, forms for your recipients. So typically for most of our customers, that is just one filer that you would need to enter into the system. Uh, but you might have multiple recipients. You might have multiple forms that you are filing. Uh, recipients are the, well, the end recipients of the forms or the folks that you are filing with the IRS. For those of you just getting started, the best place to go once you hit this page is just the add new form link at the top right here. So let's go ahead and click into that. What you're going to see right here when you land on this page is a list of all the forms that you can file with us for the tax year. Um, I'm on kind of a different version of this for the sake of this demo, but uh, right now you can see the latest year is selected. For those of you filing in 2022, you'll see 2022 selected there and all the 2022 forms that you could choose from. Just a quick note, we do support past filings, so uh, if you wanted to file for previous years, you can go ahead and do that. We just may not support uh, certain filing options or additional features features like state filing for those past years, but definitely will do that for the current filing year. We've organized this page so that you have popular forms on top. These are the most common forms that we, uh, that we see our customers filing with us. But of course, if you need something else, um, something a little different, those options are available here and are just a click away um, and organized for you. So it's uh, hopefully easier for you to find the form that you're looking for. All right. For the sake of this demo, let's go ahead and just click into the 1099 NEC and start with that. So here we go. Like I said, you would need a filer and a recipient. Um, since I'm just setting up this account, I don't have filer information set up. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll click this add new filer button. And what I'm gonna do is uh, enter some basic information, right? We have uh, an EIN option or a social security number option. We'll just type in some placeholder data for that for the sake of this demo, but you get the idea. We also offer TIN masking, which is a pretty convenient option for those of you who are wanting to kind of hide some sensitive information. This is not supported on all forms like uh, W-2s, for example, but it's a nice way to kind of, you know, ensure customer privacy and not share those informations publicly. If you're printing them, sending them to a printer, maybe in an office or something, and, and don't want to share those numbers out. So check TIN masking if you'd like that option. For the rest of this, it's basic customer information, or I should say filer information, right? So we have the filer name, let's just say Chris Demo again. We'll put in an address that I'm making up on the spot here. Uh, let's see. Whoop. Okay. So as you scroll down the page, you'll see a couple different things. One is the department code. This is actually uh, something that's typically required on a number of our forms. And this just identifies the contact within your organization that this would be associated with. So for most filings, uh, a department code could be something like uh, a number, an ID, combining a number of different uh, 
letters and numbers, but this is a way to identify those uh, different departments. And then you can also reference these once you start filling out the form. So it makes it a little bit more convenient in the future to uh, use the department code as a way to switch between different departments, like for example, accounting, finance, et cetera. So this is a required field. We're gonna go ahead and put, um, in my case, ACCT for accounting. And we'll just add a phone number here. I'm only gonna go through the basics here. So there's a couple options that are form specific as you're filling out the filer information that we're just not gonna get into on this demo, but there's uh, plenty of information on our help articles that you can go through. Hopefully those will help you better understand how to fill out this information. All right. If there's anything that I forgot to fill out that's mandatory, I'll get a nice little alert letting me know, but I got the basics covered, at least for this form type, so we're gonna go ahead and continue. All right, the next step, like I mentioned before, you need a filer and a recipient. So the next step is gonna be to add the recipient. Um, if you wanted to completely start over the process of filling out this 1099 NEC form for 2021, we could do that from here, but right now, we're actually just gonna go ahead and continue the process by adding a recipient using this button. All right, so similar to the filer form, we have the ability to enter the taxpayer identification number, the 10. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and again use a social security number. We need a basic address, so let's say, there we go, recipient. Uh, if you're filing for a company and the recipient happens to be some sort of uh, legal entity, right, like a company, you would actually just put that information here. So that would be company name. Since we're doing this for an individual, we're going to put this individual's last name here. All right. And then, of course, an address for them. And that's basically it. Again, covering the basics here, there's a couple more fields you might see in here depending on the form that you're filling out, but I'm gonna go ahead and save this recipient information. Okay, so now we have a filer and a recipient that we wanna to add to this form. I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. And what we see now is that information that we just filled out from the filer and the recipient uh, basically layered on top of a form. This is the actual information on a form that we will be sending to the, the IRS for you. Um, so if everything looks right, um, go ahead and save form. But one thing we didn't do is add the amount this employee or non-employee, I should say, was compensated with. So let's go ahead and add a round thousand dollars here. Anywhere you see this little icon here is a way to select things that you've already saved within eFilmA Forms. So something like the contact information, you'll be able to click into here. You can see the accounting department that I added earlier is actually showing up. If I had multiple departments that I wanted to be able to choose from, I would have a list of those here that I could choose from, but I only have one. So we're gonna go ahead and continue. Save the form, filing is saved, and we're pretty much good to go at this point. The one last step when you are ready to actually do the filing would be to add this to your cart. Don't forget to do that. Um, you know, we're, we're making it really easy for you to have a working queue of forms that you are building, but we don't wanna just send those over to your cart just yet. We wanna make sure that you have a, a chance to review those as you're working on them before you send them to the cart. So you could either go here and do that now if you're totally ready to go, or you could even choose to create another form. Maybe you have a couple filers uh, or a couple recipients that you need to create forms for. You could do that from uh, this button here. I'm gonna change it up a little bit though because I promised we'd talk about the import process. So let's go back home real quick, just to make sure that we can see the form that we created here. It's not in our cart. I'm actually gonna go ahead and add it from here. So this is yet another way you can add an item to your cart. I'm gonna click this button and you can see that the status is in cart. And if I went to my cart, I would see it. So that's the flow for creating a form for a recipient from start to finish. Uh, let's go back home. And actually, I'm going to click on new imports. So you can see how this process works. All right. So similar to the form uh, flow that we went through, the import form is is 
almost the same, right? Except instead of entering details manually, you're gonna be importing a form that contains all those details in it. So the first step, just like adding a new form, is to select the type of form you want. I'm gonna go ahead and choose uh, the 1095B, that's our second most popular form, it has to do with ACA uh, filing. And what, could you, what you can see here is the next step is to basically map information to the form, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and name this import. Um, let's go ahead and say demo import number one. And which filer do I wanna associate this with? There are a couple cases where you might have multiple, multiple filers in, uh, in, in your, your, your filing that you want to include, and those could all be listed out in the actual import file itself. Or if you wanted to go in and set up a filer ahead of time, like we did for our previous form, you could just go ahead and choose that filer here. All right, so we've selected the filer. Uh, the next step is really going to be about uh, importing your data. Before we do that, if you're importing for the first time, you probably want to get started with a sample file. So we have two types of, uh, of import files that you can uh, start with. Uh, one is a basic import file, which is the first option here. So this just has you know, a couple headings that help you import your file to this process. It really is intended to import one filer and multiple recipients. Uh, the next type is a little bit more complex for those scenarios where you might be importing for multiple filers or multiple companies. So depending on your situation, you might want to choose one, one or the other. Most customers of ours choose just the, the first option, which is the sample import files here. So what that's going to do is open up a window that lets you choose from a list of uh, sample files. Again, we're supporting a lot of different tax years and form types. So you can go back here and select the one that you are filing with. For us, it's the 2021-1095B. So we're going to choose that and open it up. And what it looks like is essentially this here. So what I'm showing is actually uh, the second sheet at the bottom is a key that gives you a sense for how this is built. But this is the type of information that you're going to be importing. So the 1095B is a really complex type of form. It's one of our most complex forms, actually. And I'm sure you've you've seen this format. You've uh, gotten a little scared by it, maybe, <laughs> like I did. We've tried to make it really simple. So all this information here is what would be uh, required for the form as you're building it. And this will import nicely into the product. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, save this, go back to, whoops. Go back to this uh, page here. I'm gonna choose that file. This is the 1095B, we're gonna submit. So what I suggest when you get to this step is actually to hit this auto map button. Sure, you could go uh, you know, column by column and drop in any of these, uh, these items to the form itself. That is definitely a path, but to get you um, through the process even more quickly, we can auto map this information for you. So what you're looking at here is the form not with specific you know, individual uh, cell information attached, but what we're looking at is the column name and the type of information that you're gonna be submitting in bulk. So all this process is really intended to map the form uh, information to the form itself. Once you've hit auto map and feel good about all the information and how it's been filled in, you can go ahead and hit submit. And now you have a summary of the information as it was imported to the form type. So if you go back to the home page, you will see all the new forms that you created for this form type through the import process. For the 1095B, there are some additional steps. Uh, there's a transmittal that you would need to finish as part of this process. Um, but again, go to the Help Center for any sort of information that might help you walk through this process what we've done here is basically pre-filled a lot of this for you based on the filer information. And all you would need to do is just complete these fields uh, so that you can uh, file the transmittal as part of this type of return filing process. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel. And that's pretty much it. Uh, we've already added the NEC to your cart. Once you wrap up those transmittals, you can add this to your cart as well. And then it's basically just going through the payment process and checking out, that's where you would add your credit card information. So that's pretty much it. Once you arrive at the cart, you have a couple more options. One of those is the 10 masking service. So you remember back when you filled out that initial form or rather the uh, recipient, um, there was the option to mask that 10 number. Uh, if you'd like to do that across all your forms where it's eligible to do so, uh, you could do that here with the 10 masking option. 
there's also a 10 check service, which we provide for eligible tens and you know certain form types. So we'll break that down for you and show you exactly what would be filed. But if you have eligible form types in your cart and want to do a 10 check to make sure you're not getting any sort of errors from the IRS or any sort of penalties potentially from the IRS based on a uh, a bad 10 number. Uh, we offer this service. It's a buck per form. So highly encourage you to check that out. Uh, it's a great way to kind of give um, give yourself confidence that things are filed and ready to go uh, before you get into a situation where you might have penalties, which is never fun. Uh, the final thing that I actually realize I'm not showing here is our state filing service. So depending on the type of form that you're filing, um, you might have an option for state filing. You know, the IRS bundles a lot of the filing uh, together and actually automatically files to certain states that support it. And that's included as part of this service for free. But for those select few states that actually don't support the IRS integration, um, we fill the gap for you. So we, we actually make it possible for you to file with other states that aren't part of that IRS and state filing program and fill the gaps for you. So you don't have to worry about going in and filing those on your own. We could do that as part of the service. There is a fee associated with that, but it's a really nice way to kind of make sure you're getting a lot of coverage during this time of year and don't have to worry about doing the manual work yourself. So consider that some great options during the checkout process. I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. Um, the checkout process after this is pretty straightforward, so I'm not going to go into the details, but um, I wish you luck during the season. Hopefully this review was helpful, and uh, if you ever need anything from us, we're a click away. Uh, we have live chat available in the bottom right corner of the application. Uh, at the very top, we have the help center, and you can always call support if you need to. That number is listed on the website as well. So thanks for listening in. Um, have a good day.